Column E, no order, and column chapter Bart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the road. Councillor Barton. Here. Councillor Brown. Here. Councillor Jennings. Here. Councillor Broughton. Here. Councillor Watson. Mayor Loveless. Here. We have a quorum to do business. Approval of the November 22nd uh, regular meeting minutes. Motion to approve minutes for November 22nd. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Barton, a second by Councillor Broughton to approve the November 22nd, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? Yes. Councillor Broughton? Yes. The minutes for November 22nd, 2021 are approved. Next item is a public hearing to consider a liquor license for entertainment events, Inc. <coughs> Doing business is Bama's Guff Cuisine. I'll call the public hearing to order and ask if there's anyone here that would like to speak in opposition to this. Or is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor? Okay, none. I close the public hearing. Next item is under new business. Approve accounts payable for November 2021. Mayor, I make a motion to approve accounts payable for November 2021. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Broughton, a second by Councillor Brown to approve the accounts payable for November 2021. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? No. Councillor Broughton? Yes. The accounts payable for November 2021 are approved. Next item is a prosing program update request, and I call on Rev Reverend Anthony Tim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. It's an honor to stand before you and give you a, a brief update and ongoing activities for the PROS uh, program. As you all know, in, uh, PROS, we've been in, uh, here in Bruton for the last two years, I think, and um, we have a three-phase uh, program, ages 6 um, to 11, I think, and 12 to um, 16 and um, 18 until an unlimited age. And that is phase three. Phase one, we have been very active with our, our young boys. Um, as you can see on the slide there, we've um, had many visits from the fire department. Um, the police department, sheriff's department, uh, ATF agents, DEA agents, uh, bankers, um, and they all come in and they're you know, teaching the young boys at an early age on how uh, to become a man and take responsibilities. As well, um, this phase one group, we have participated throughout the city uh, with food drives. Um, we even repair parts of the Fisher Center, uh, beautifying parts of the patio. Uh, we've been on many trips uh, with this group. As well, um, we go out through the community and try to help uh, the elderly as we can. We've also uh, contributed monies to help um, one elderly um, lady whose bathroom um, fell in. So we were able to go in and, and give her a hand as well. Phase one is a very um, growing, inspiring program with young boys from all over um, 
if you talk with the local school teachers, they have, uh, they say they've seen a change in a lot of the boys. We don't try to uh, pick and choose which boys we receive, but I do request that we try to deal with those who have some type of um, uh, learning issue or problem with uh, discipline at home and school. We try to deal with those young men, and we've seen a change in those. But phase three is one that's really close to my heart, and we've been struggling on how to get this kicked off. Phase three is dealing with um, the age group 18, hey, to 101. And that is trying to get these young men who are not working and who are just sitting on the corner or sitting at home. We're trying to get them and, 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 and get them a, um, a hope uh, for the future. And what I mean by that is that we want to take them. If they got some kind of issues, or whatever the case may be, out of jail, uh, drugs, whatever the case may be, we want to take those young men and we want to try to make them employable. And what I mean by that is we're going to make them job ready. We're going to take them and we're going to train them um, with the help of the local businesses here in the community. Um, we got a, a, the last sheet you received, you should see the different uh, curriculums that we have um, planned for them, uh, dress code, resume writing, uh, basic computer skills, uh, driver's license prep. You'll be surprised that a lot of young men, they don't have a driver's license, they don't want a driver's license, but we got to try to inspire them in some kind of way to, hey, you really need your driver's license. So um, we aim at turning this group of men um, into productive young men. Uh, they want to provide for their families, uh, the communities, uh, the church. And once we see a change in that, um, in that set of community of um, people or men or whatever you want, know, um, once we see a improvement in them, I'm quite sure we'll see a, a tremendous improvement within the city, uh, the county, as well as the state. Um, that is a little brief overview I'll try to put together in three minutes. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here for the picking. So I see your, uh, your budget that you have. What, what are you asking what you'd like the city to do? Well, we have an uh, operating budget around $40,000 in the city. I think $15,000. But the amount you're asking for is, is, is 15000 is that what we're saying? Yes, sir. Okay. That's yeah. fine. That's 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 all I needed on that. Hmm. And we just get this on um, the pros and cover with five oh C three be non profit or we requested fifteen thousand dollars, which would help us accomplish many goals for the program that not only will enhance the lives of those who need it, but their families, the city, the community, and the future of all will be benefactors of this program. Yes, that's on page two.
Any other questions? Are there any other resources you are searching for to get finance from? Well, we are uh, receiving resources from uh, the Zion Fountain Amy Zion Church. Um, the sheriff have contributed in the past. Um, we have a personal uh, donation from, from individuals. Um, many of our directors, they have a monthly um, um, offering they give to the pros. Um, we also partner with uh, Popeyes and Pizza Hut who supply most of our um, meals. Um, I think that is about it, and we do um, um, a low level fundraising as well. And that's the bulk of our um, uh, donation that we received from the area. And somewhere in the also stated this uh, program, the pro program, uh, you're not going to find another one like it here in the county. One of the best programs uh, in the state of Alabama. We are looking to expand this program. Uh, there are not many programs that you can find that bring in the caliber of people that we have to come in to um, help us uh, minister to these young men. Um, like I said, um, we had a DEA agent, ATF agent, come in. Um, not only did it blow the kids' mind, but it, it blew our mind as an adult to have some agent of that caliber to come and um, speak with us. So um, it's, it's a very interesting program, and I, I think the young men who receive uh, the guidance, they're going to go a long way uh, in life. I can stand here and say as well that we've had four to drop out. Um, their parents did not want the sort of discipline that we were giving them. And, and I'm not sitting here and saying, hey, I told you so, but um, three of those young men are now in um, you know, serious trouble. Um, some have even been caught now with, um, with drugs. And that's a, uh, that's a sad event in my heart, either way it goes. And, when I do see them, every time I see them, I try to encourage them and, and ask them to get back in the program because, hey, you already started off in the wrong way. You know, all these drugs, they're not going to do anything but, but damage your, your life, your future, your family. And I hate to see that at a young age. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. And I'm going to appoint a committee. Uh, Councilor Brown, Councilor Broughton, Councilor Barton to uh, study this request and come back with a recommendation for the council. The next item, um, YMCA has a new executive director, Rob Kirkland, and we've asked Rob to come and tell us what he'd like to tell us. Well, how's everybody doing this evening? I am Rob Kirkland and I am honored to be uh, the new director at the YMCA. A little history about myself and I, that was what I understood we wanted to, to discuss. 20, uh, back in 1993, my father was minister at the East Bruton Baptist Church and I was in college at that time. And I uh, finished up at Enterprise State and, and was in a transition time of trying to figure out what I wanted to do after that. And uh, unlike a lot of folks, I, when I didn't know what I wanted to do, I stopped my education. I didn't want to go any further, so I actually built semi-truck trailers at Dorsey's for a year while I tried to figure that out. And then asked my parents if I could come back home and live with them for a brief time as I discovered who I was going to be. Uh, at that time, I was able to come to the YMCA. It's my first experience in the YMCA to just exercise. And I uh, became uh, friends with Mr. Billy Rhodes. He was the CEO at the time. and. He uh, asked me if I'd like a job. I said, absolutely, and he got to know me better and said, you know, son, I think you got a, an opportunity of, of a career in this field if you are open to that. And I said, man, that's, that's great news because right now I don't have anything going on. So uh, after a good discussion and a career plan with him, 
I went to Troy and graduated there with a sport management degree and been working in the YMCA ever since. And uh, I feel like to prepare me to come back to a place I've always wanted to come back to. So I've been doing Y work for 26 years. Uh, this will be my eighth, but really seventh, because I've been here twice, YMCA I've worked in. And that's taken me, uh, I fell in love and married a girl from Grand Rapids, Michigan. and. Uh, Moved up there, worked in Michigan, worked in Pennsylvania, came back to Montgomery. Uh, Monroe was the CEO, the first one at their new facility back in the day. And I uh, went from there to Bessemer, Alabama, ran that wide, then Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And this opportunity has opened up, so here I am. And uh, Holly and I have been married 25 years, and we have four boys. Harrison is 23, will be graduating. Uh, with a, uh, a degree from South Alabama and uh, Hunter rooms with him. He's our second son and he's in technology. Harrison's in accounting. Uh, and then we have two here at T.R. Miller. Heath is a 10th grader and Henry is an 8th grader. So uh, Heath likes baseball and basketball and Henry likes football and basketball. So we're, we're wide open with basketball right now. So, But I always wanted to come back and I think that says a lot about the community of Bruton uh, as I've been doing this 26 years. That was one of our goals was to either come back and work in the wire or at least possibly just come back and retire to this community. So it had a big impression over a short period of time in my life and I really owe a lot to this YMCA to where I'm at today. So I've, I have a, a strong sense of loyalty to the community and the Y because of what it's been able to allow me to do in my life. So um, with that said, uh, are there any questions about that? And I'll talk a moment about the baseball field. Any, it, so I, I wanted to say thank you guys for the 10000 that was given the donation to help us with the Babe Ruth field. Uh, our hope is to have it in plan and, and kind of got to is to have it ready by the end of January. So that's our mark. Uh, I met, met with the contractor Friday. Everything's moving along real well. And so we appreciate you guys' gift and we, we will have that going. The only thing that I don't see being finished in January is the sod and we have to wait for spring to finish that one. So it'll be dirt for a little while and then when uh, Mother Nature changes seasons, we'll be able to do the sod. Well, I appreciate you guys' time and, and understand I've, I've seen a pretty good bit over the years working with the Y. My attitude towards, or my philosophy maybe would be a better way to say it, is serving the community and creating impact. And we have a great facility over there, a nice tool, a resource. I know we have a great relationship with the city, with the school system, and we're always looking for partners to see how we can better serve our community and take care of our kids and our adults and just make Bruton even better than it is today. So that's my heart, that's my passion, and I welcome anyone who wants to sit down and have that conversation. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming today, and good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is to approve an easement and property acquisition for a new Bruton Medical Center pharmacy site, and I will call on the city clerk. Um, I'm it, sorry. Yeah, I'm one ahead. Liquor licenses first. I'm one ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. that's okay. Next item is to approve a liquor license for Entertainment Events, Inc. doing business as Bama's Guff Cuisine. Resolution number 21-1213-1. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 21-1213-1. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Broughton, a second by Councillor Jennings to approve resolution 21-1213-1. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? Yes. Councillor Broughton? Yes. Resolution 21-1213-1 is approved. Now the next one I will turn over to the city clerk to talk about the Bruton Medical Center. Um, the Bruton Medical Center is actually moving locations. They are building a new building in the parking lot somewhat of the current medical center site. They're moving outside of the building. Um, the place where they are hoping to build their new location actually sits on an easement that is owned by the city of Bruton. Um, so they have reached out to us and they have been in contact with the utility superintendent Ray Madden about this new building. Um, they are willing to relocate any of the pipes within our easement and to move those to a new easement and give the new easement back to the city of Bruton. 
Um, Ray's been involved heavily with the planning on where it would go and, and making sure that that would fit within our current infrastructure. Um, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer, but that's basically what this resolution is. And there's no cost to the city of Bruton. All of the costs will be incurred by the owner. I make a motion we approve resolution 21-1213-2. Second. I have a motion by Councilor Jennings, a second by Councilor Barton to approve resolution 21-1213-2. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? Yes. Councillor Broughton? Yes. Resolution 21-1213-2 is approved. Next item is to approve a council meeting date change from January the 24th of 2022 to January the 25th of 2022. That's resolution number 21-1213-3. Motion to approve resolution 21-1213-3. Second. I have a motion by Councilor <coughs> Barton, a second by Councilor Broughton to approve resolution 21-1213-3. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? Yes. Councillor Broughton? Yes. Resolution 21-1213-3 is approved. The next item is to approve a one-time pay increase to the City of Bruton employees using uh, the American uh, Rescue Plan Act funding uh, and I'll call them the city clerk. Um, this is a one-time pay increase to what's considered premium employees. We were given funds from the American Rescue Plan Act that have some stipulations um, on what we can use those funds for. One of the options is to provide a one-time payment, premium payment to workers who are on the front lines dealing with the public which exposes them to COVID-19. A couple of other cities have passed a similar resolution. I've spoken with the league um, who confirms that we can pass this with a resolution. If it passes today, um, it would go into effect before the next payroll. So, and if there's any questions, I'll be glad to elaborate. So this would be a one-time uh, amount of $500? Correct. So that is resolution number 21-1213-4. Motion to approve resolution 21-1213-4. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Barton, a second by Councillor Broughton to approve resolution 21-1213-4. Is there any discussion? That does not include us, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, there is a, you're right. There is a stipulation in it that says um, directors or however they officers. Officers, okay. that's the word they use, are not eligible. So counselors would not be eligible. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Barton? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Jennings? Yes. Councillor Broughton? Yes. Resolution 21-1213-4 is approved. And when do you, would that be paid to them? Um, it would probably go out next week, I would say. We're in a payroll this week, so it'll probably be processed as a separate one next week. Okay. The next item is to appoint a committee member for the Industrial Development Board. And we appointed a... Uh, a committee and I'll call on Councilor Peace Frog. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on this development board, we had a gentleman that stepped down, said he uh, couldn't be on there any longer. And our search was went out and we found uh, Mr. S uh, Harry Cecil and uh, talked with him and he uh, agreed to be on the board. And I'd like to put in a form of a motion that we uh, appoint Mr. Cecil to the board. Does that need a second? Please. Second. 
have a motion by Councillor Broughton, a second by Councillor Jennings. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councillor Barton. Yes. Councillor Brown. Yes. Councillor Jennings. Yes. Councillor Broughton. Yes. Harry Cecil will be the new member to the Industrial Development Board. And also, just wanted to make sure that everybody understood we have plenty of these um, brochures that Connie had printed up for the different uh, Christmas events that are still uh, coming up and they're available all over town uh, to uh, be certain to put on people's calendars. That, I'll adjourn the meeting.